Hi everybody, we have a birth announcement for our litter of mini Labradoodle puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuys Labradoodles and today we are going to be introducing you to Belle and Eli's Moonbeams litter. There are just two of these little precious mini Labradoodle puppies in this litter. So we'll have lots of time to talk about each of the puppies in the video and we're going to tell you a little bit about the birth experience and how things are going with Belle. And we're also going to give you a little bit of background information as to how we choose who the moms and dads will be for our litters at Van Nuys Labradoodles. So let's start off with uh, what happened with the birth experience for this litter, our beautiful moonbeam puppies. Well, what we do is when we, we do a progesterone test of our girls, and that's just a simple blood test that we do. We do that for all of our girls when they cycle. And that progesterone test tells us when the girl has ovulated. And when they've ovulated helps us determine what their due date is and also what the best breeding dates are for them. So generally speaking, after a dog is ovulated, you breed them 24 and 48 hours after that's occurred. And that result you know from the progesterone test that you do. And like I said, simple blood test that is done at the vet office. So we knew when Belle ovulated and she was fairly quick to ovulate. And so then we arranged for her honeymoon with Eli. And then what we do to figure out the birth, uh, the due date for the puppies is we calculate 63 days from the date of ovulation. Most dogs are uh, pregnant for 63 days, which is nine weeks. So humans are generally pregnant for nine months and dogs for nine weeks. It's a much quicker process when you're a dog. You don't have to wait anywhere near as long to see your babies. So when, uh, when Bells was uh, were ovulated, it was completely my mistake. I didn't put the date into our computer program. And so instead the computer generated what it thought was going to be the due date based on Bell's previous cycle. So we had January 23rd as her due date. Now what happened was on Monday, her Bell's guardian sent me a text late in the evening saying, hmm, Bell's starting to pant. So I asked her, well, is she doing anything else? Like, is she digging? These are two signs that the girl is in early labor. And she indeed was scratching away and trying to get to her bed. So luckily our guardian lives very close by and we had them come right away with Belle. We got everything ready so we were all set up if Belle was going to have her puppies in the evening on Monday. So she got here, it was about 10 o'clock at night and uh, we stayed up with her and our dogs for about an hour, made sure she saw where everything was and was familiar with it. And then we decided, well, we better go to bed because it was quite likely she was going to have the puppies at any time early in the morning. So off we went. Uh, Belle was mostly up on our bed with us. She would move from spot to spot. She was clearly in early labor. So it was a really good thing her guardian was so observant and got her to us so quickly. And then at about, oh, 6.15 in the morning, she got really serious about it. So we quickly took our dogs out and secured them in the doodle den so they weren't going to bother Belle. We heated up our bedroom and we were underway and puppy number one was born at seven in the morning. And the first puppy born is the party puppy here. Now I don't have collars on these puppies. There's only two, so I think we'll be able to figure out who's who without a collar. So we'll have party girl and we'll have gold girl. So Party Girl was born uh, precisely at 7 a.m. and she came in at 193 grams. It was a fairly quick uh, delivery for Belle. It was a little uncomfortable for her. She had some complaints about it, but uh, she handled it with no problem. And when Party Girl was born, Belle was like, oh, hmm, didn't know what to do, looked at the puppy, but uh, didn't do anything else. So that's when we help our girls out because this is totally normal. When the first puppy's born, they don't always instinctively know what it is that they should be doing. 
So then what we do is we deliver the placenta, we tie off the cord, we cut the cord, and then we rub really vigorously on the puppy to make sure that the puppy is going and that they're breathing all right. So it's quite a vigorous rub that you do. And then once they start squeaking, we know everything is going well. And then we also suction them out because they have a lot of mucus. And so we don't want all that mucus in, in their throats and going down into their lungs uh, because it's very easy for puppies of this age to aspirate. And of course, obviously that's not something we would want to happen. And then uh, 36 minutes later, Gold Girl was born and uh, she was even bigger than Party Girl. She was 214 grams and she was born at 7.36 a.m. And now we have a Doppler, a little handheld Doppler. It's certainly nothing like a Doppler that you find in a vet office or a hospital. Uh, but nonetheless, we use it quite often so that we can scan over mom and we can see are there still heartbeats. Uh, so when we first scanned over, we thought, oh yeah, it's showing us that there is one. And so we were very excited thinking that we were going to get another puppy, uh, but it was a false reading. So sometimes what the Doppler will do is it will pick up other pulse rates that are going on internally inside the girl. Uh, so there was no other puppy, there is just the two puppies. Now if you remember back to uh, one of our other litters, the Precious Metals litter with Jojo, we had two puppies in that litter as well. And as coincidence would have it, Jojo and Belle's humans are friends and they live very close to one another and Jojo and Belle are friends. So I think Belle wanted to make sure she didn't show her friend Jojo up because she had the complete same litter. She has one party and one solid and they're both girls. And so <laughs> here we are doing the two some again. Now I was going to tell you a little bit about um, how we decide what girl and what boy to put together for a litter. So first of all, you'll see Belle is very tiny. If you follow our Facebook page, you'll have seen pictures of our new little puppy who's living with us named Cayenne. And Cayenne is going to be a large, mini, small, medium size. And Cayenne was born on September the 9th, so she's around four months old. And Belle here is not bigger than Cayenne. So she's a very small mini, a very petite girl. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much she weighs, but I would not think she weighs much more than 15 to 16 pounds. And she is just a tiny little thing. She just comes up to about here on my leg. She's about 14 inches tall. So the first thing you want to take into consideration when you're planning a pairing with a girl is that the boy dog is not a huge difference in size. You don't want to have a small dog like this and breed her to some big standard dog. Um, you would have to do that probably by AI, although dogs are amazing. Even little tiny dogs the size of Belle that are boys can often manage to mate with a great big girl. Uh, but why do we not want to do that? Well, the main thing is you could end up with puppies that are a very peculiar combination. They could have a small petite head such as Belle does and then they could have great big huge long legs and everything would just be completely out of proportion. It is not the way we want to do things. So first thing we do is pick out the size. Then of course we go to the genetics. We look at the pedigree of mom and we look at the pedigree of dad. Now we belong to WALA, which is the Worldwide Australian Labradoodle Association. That's our professional governing body. That's where all our ethics, all of our rules for breeding are all based from and all the health testing that's required. Uh, so when you're picking a Labradoodle breeder, you want to look for a breeder who is able to provide you with proof of their membership in a professional body such as WALA. WALA is probably the leading organization for Labradoodles in the world because it is a worldwide organization. There are a couple of European clubs and a couple of American clubs, but they're very limited to just being in those their own countries. So we prefer the worldwide one as it gives us a much better and broader experience. We are able to interact with readers from all over the world and we're able to have all sorts of information and knowledge 
from the entire world when it comes to Australian Labradoodles. And for us, knowledge is key. And we really think that that helps our program and helps the Labradoodle breed in general. So Walla has a uh, really nice little program in it where you can put in your mom dog's name and whatever boy you think you might use. And it runs a very complicated series of mathematical um, equations to come up with what we as breeders call the COI, which is the coefficient of inbreeding. Now, if you uh, ever look up a purebred dog, so let's say we were going to buy a poodle, you'll find that they often have uh, inbreeding up around the 30 and 40 percent, sometimes even 50 percent. And what that really means is your mom and your dad are just have that many percentage of uh, from, uh, same ancestors in their pedigree. 50% uh, would be if you had uh, sister, half sister and brother. Oftentimes in the purebred world, a mother is bred to her son. In the Australian Labradoodle world, for those of us who are professional registered breeders, that is a no-no. That is definitely what we don't want to do. And that's one of the reasons why you'll find that almost all Australian Labradoodle breeders chose this breed. And that's because we're looking to build genetic diversity. The whole thing started with the foundation breeds, which was a poodle, a lab, and some spaniel as a little splash, but basically a poodle and a lab. And then we've built from there. Uh, so we don't want to have everything closed in where all the dogs are related to one another because eventually then the breed dies out. And this is occurring the, uh, now, right away today, with many of the purebred breeds. They are also related that they can't have healthy litters. Uh, so it's just like if we were people and we were um, having babies with our brothers and sisters and cousins and had run out of other people, soon there would be no people left that were healthy. Uh, so that's the first thing we do is we run the COI. So at uh, Van Isle Labradoodles, we, uh, our goal is to always have under 5% COI. So very limited related parties in the litter. And this is one of the reasons why we buy most of our studs, so that they do have completely different lines in genetics. So for Belle's litter here, we had Eli as our option because he was our tiniest boy. We could have also looked at using Copper. Uh, he's also smaller. We could have even used Bentley. Bentley is just right about at the edge of my comfort zone for difference in sizes. Uh, but Eli was ready to go and then after we decide that there's very little related um, ancestry in the pedigree, then we move on to, okay, what are we going to get in terms of patterns? Because what we want to do is make sure that our patterns and our colors are also matching up so that those go together well. So a little sweetheart Belle here, she is actually an extreme caramel party. And what an extreme is, is when there is very little of the base color and the dog is almost all of the white color. So you'll see here in Party Girl from this litter, she has the caramel all over her head. She has lots of spots on her body. So she's what a, a party. But with Belle, you don't see hardly any color. You just see a little touch of that caramel right here on her ears. And otherwise, she's this gorgeous snow white color. She's such a pretty little girl. She's just, just gorgeous. Oh, she says, I think it's time for a tummy rub now. Uh, you'll see that she's almost asleep. And part of the reason for that is because I'm in here with her. And when I'm in here with her, that allows her the opportunity to completely relax and not worry about the puppies. So I try to come in several times a day to give her that opportunity and that mental break where she just doesn't have to be concerned about the babies. Now Eli, Eli looks very similar to Bill, but he is not a caramel. He is virtually the same color, but he has a black nose. So that makes him a cream. And if you look on our website and you see Spirit, you'll see Spirit is almost identical to Eli, except for she's much bigger and she's a girl. But when you have this color body and a black nose, that's a cream. So together, Eli and Belle 
if they had had more puppies, they would have had a rainbow litter. They could have created every single color of dog in the world together. So lots of fun and that's just a little bit of the background as to how we choose based on the physical things. Then the other thing we do is we look at temperament. What is the temperament of the girl and what type of boy does she need to go with him to make us have the most well-rounded, nice group of puppies in terms of their personalities. So Belle is a very sweet little girl. She's beautifully behaved. She's, uh, she's fun and she's bouncy, but she's also a very calm girl. She's, she's mature. She's not a silly dog at all. So she has a really nice temperament. Um, and Eli, very similar, but he's a little bit more outgoing. So we wanted to liven things up just a tad. So Eli was the perfect choice for Belle. And so that's how we came to have the Moonbeams litter. And that's the process we go through for all of our litters. Now I think Belle will be all right if I pick the puppies up so I can actually show them to you. At least we'll get up to here. So this is puppy number one. This is our party girl. And you'll see her markings on her head are absolutely stunning. She's just going to be the most beautiful girl. And you'll see as you follow us along in the next eight weeks with our litter updates that these markings on her back here, her party markings, this is not a party marking, this is some food from Belle's breakfast. These will darken up a little bit. So they'll become even more obvious and matching a little bit more with the color on her head. Just such a pretty, pretty color that we've got going on here. Really a nice face and all that white on the face really sets off the, that beautiful golden caramel tone. Really pretty puppy. And then puppy number two, well, she's nursing. And I'll just see how upset she gets if I remove her. Nope, she's pretty good. So this little girl is just the prettiest little color as well. So she's a caramel. And we'll see if we can just get her to look at the camera. There we go. And you can see she has a little bit of white on the top of her head, that little tiny bit. And then she's got lots of white on her chest underneath her. And then she has a little bit of lighter color over her thigh area here. And her tail is a little lighter as well. So uh, there's lots of different terms for caramels in the Australian Labradoodle world. There's iced and frosted and all sorts of goofy names for them. But basically she is a really pretty dark cream color. I was calling her gold. Um, and that was what I was going to call her was Goldie, but she's not really a gold. Uh, she's much more of a Devonshire cream. So we're just going to call her the, the dark cream baby girl. Now you'll see the puppies keep gravitating towards the back of Belle. The reason for that is because of course there's, there's no real competition here at the milk bar. Uh, so just like with Jojo, Belle's front teats will end up drying up and we may have to help along with that. Um, so we're not encouraging the puppies to nurse off of there. We're trying to keep them just at the back here so that naturally her other areas will dry up on their own because she doesn't need to be producing all that much milk for, for just two puppies. Yeah, that's a good girl. She's doing a great job though. She's really looking after the puppies quite nicely. Uh, she's settling in. Yesterday she was a little bit of up and down, still a little unsure as to what her role was and what was required of her and still really wanting to be part of the everyday family life. So when she would see us or hear us walking by at all, if she can't see us but she can hear us, she would always be up and going, well can I come too? And then we would let her out of course whenever she requested but then she be like oh but my babies I got to go back so it takes a little while for first time mama labradoodles just to get into the swing of things and feel comfortable with how long they can and can't leave their puppies alone and then it was about oh I think it was about five this morning Reynolds is that right that she wanted to go out yeah about five this morning she woke us up with 
some squeaks and banging on her door. Uh, so Reynold got up and took her out uh, and for whatever reason she had some giant bark fest. I'm sure our neighbors were just delighted at that. Um, but she was just barking and barking and barking and barking. There was nothing there, nothing going on, but in her mind there was some reason why she had to do all the barking. Maybe it was just her establishing, hey I'm here, I'm having puppies, back off. Nobody's allowed to be in here. I don't think anybody would be too scared of you. No, you're far too cute. Yes, I think you're far too cute for anybody to be scared of you, you goofus girl. So anyways, then she came back in the house and rather than going to the bathroom outside, she decided she should go to the bathroom inside the house. So it was not fun at five o'clock in the morning. You weren't the most popular girl then, were you? Oh no, I don't think so, no, but that's okay. Like I said, sometimes it just takes a little while for all the hormones to settle down a bit and for the girl to just get comfortable in her role. It's a huge change and she didn't have any time to acclimate. She came at 10 o'clock at night and at seven in the morning she was um, a mom so I'm sure she's just a little bit overwhelmed by all of the what's happened in such a short period of time and we just are going to totally understand and try and just make all of it more comfy for Belle and let her just have the best experience too because dogs like being moms and we really want to be sure that they're enjoying the experience just as much as we do and we figure you do too so I hope you liked this litter update. If you have any questions about uh, if you're a new breeder in particular and you're wondering how to calculate a COI, if you have any questions about Walla, how to find a professional breeder, uh, what it means to have a registered Labradoodle puppy, anything at all, or if you just want to know more about the puppies themselves, please feel free to ask away in the comments there. I'm always happy to chat with you and uh, answer any questions that you may have as best as I can. And we hope you subscribe to our channel. If you're one of our early access program members and you're watching this video to take a look at what Eli has produced, because uh, you're thinking about perhaps joining in on his next litter, uh, then uh, with Anise, then please uh, just feel free to ask any questions that you may have as well and sign up for uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do do other YouTube videos as well as litter updates. We do have another litter and in each video we try to give you just a little bit of information that's unique. So we hope you enjoyed watching and we hope we'll see you all again next week for the week one update for our beautiful Moonbeams mini Labradoodle puppies.